and Villarreal looked like the better side. And why did they look like the better side? Because Emre decided, you know what? My players are tired. I need to freshen things up. Right? What the Ross did Oli do, bro? Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> yes, people, another edition of Nights Around Table Discussions where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guys, the truth and tooth with me. How are we doing, people? It's all good, man. Oh, brother, I just came on to hear you <laughs> lay into Ole. You get me, bruv? I just want to see you cook this guy, bruv. So I'm just going to be a fly on the wall for this episode, fam. You get me? <laughs> oh, man. But listen, it's a pleasure to have you on here. Anyway, I'm still going to ask you a question or two when we get to the second <laughs> part of the show. But it's all good. Um, yeah, people, unfortunately, um, we have to do a Europa League review show because it's in the remit. Um, but, or, but also, basically, basically, we didn't do it after like straight after because TJ was was trying to catch a catch a case. He's Listen, trying to catch man. So I would have to wait. I would have went jail, bro. I would have went jail. <laughs> we have to keep him on the lock on lock and key or otherwise there's gonna be some damage caused. <laughs> Listen, so I'm, that's why it's today. I would have went jail. They would have cancelled us. Listen, <laughs> bro, they're they're looking to send me into friggin' where did Schofield go in prison break? In Mexico, <laughs> bro. That's what they would right. to send me. After that final, bro. <laughs> um, oh, but man. yeah, people, that's what we're going to be doing. Europa League review and a Champions League preview as we look ahead to the Champions League final, which is happening on Saturday. But as usual, before we start, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Get them likes up. Get them subscriptions up and share, share, share. Make sure you send it out and share it to whosoever. We don't care as long as you share it. Um, but yeah. You're okay. Hey, Yo. Before we go, quick question, bro. Did yeah, you yeah. see that Cavani where Ole where Ole told him to go up? Mm. And then Cavani just fucking went ham on him, bruv. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it, bruv. Kawhi told him to suck his mum, bruv. Like, who are you to try and tell me anything, bruv? Like, who are you to try and tell hey, me anything? Hey, none of that team knows what it's like <laughs> to score a winning goal in a final of high importance. Everyone should have been listening to Sosha. And if they listened, maybe you guys are the one. Bruv, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't take much effort to stick your foot out, bruv. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't take much effort to stick your foot out, bro. Oh, I told man already, bro, he is a moment's guy. But, listen, these people are trying to upset me already. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> even got there yet. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, Europa League final. Uh, Villarreal uh, winning on penalties 11-10. Uh, Emre, redemption. Um, winning the Europa League for a fourth time. Uh, winning it with two clubs, three with Sevilla, one with um, Villarreal. And you can see how the way, how I kept keep saying, um, like, it's not me leading the questions. But um, I will ask one question, though, like, yeah. before before you lot get on to me. Like, yeah. the truth, but it's specifically to you. Obviously, Emre was at Arsenal. You went to the Europa League final, ended up losing to Chelsea. Um, obviously got rid of him, brought Arteta in, Arteta won the FA Cup, won the FA Cup, but um, Emre's obviously gone on to win the Europa League with Villarreal. Any, any regret or nah, uncomfortable? No. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, there's no regrets, there's no regrets, but in terms of Emre's career, he's been able to salvage it and now he's back, back to being the man that you put in charge of your <clears throat> of your Valencias, your Sevillas, your Villarreal. Um, if it wasn't for the English barrier, he would be, you know, someone that Everton, um, West Ham, maybe even Leicester would look at. Um, foreign, foreignly, you could go to over in France again, go to your Monaco's, your Lyons, them kind of places. But in terms of big pressure, he's not the guy for that as of yet. He needs to actually go and prove himself in that big pressure situation. Mm. Um, 
so yeah, in terms of that, he has brought it back because it's Vill- Villarreal's first trophy. Yeah, it's the first trophy, so respect to him. And yeah, um, but no regrets because it it became disaster <laughs> at the end of his spell. It became disaster at the end of his spell, so no regrets. No. No, it's true. It's true. I, I, I think, I think he's one of them. I, I think I completely agree with you. I think he's one of the managers where, if you've got a team that finishes fourth, fifth, sixth on a regular basis, yeah. I think he's the man for that. I think he likes that underdog mentality. Mm. Um, and obviously, the, the Europa League is his trophy. I mean, it's the Emirates, <laughs> four times, it's the, it? uh, four times or right? Emirates yeah. Cup. Is, is mm-hmm. what they call it. And um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Arsenal was just a bit too big for him. Will mm-hmm. he get another big job again? I don't think so. I think maybe a Monaco, uh, maybe a Leon, maybe a Lazio. He, so I think for, to get a big club, he would have to get a club and become like an Atletico. Mm. Um, I think there's, as I said, he loves the underdog mentality. His football suits the underdog. Let's be real. That final... It was not pretty watching. It was oh, one of the worst Europa League finals that I've seen <laughs> in a long time. It was awful. It was it, awful. It was, it was disgusting. When you think about it, last year, um, Inter Milan versus Seville, you know, that, that was a great watch. This one, I had people actually saying they fell asleep. I had my boy saying he fell asleep and he set his alarm for the penalty shootout <laughs> because he knew there was going to be a penalty shootout and he woke up for the penalty shootout. And then he wished he didn't work up for the penny shot because it went on for so long. <laughs> so, yeah, now um, he, he needs to prove himself that he can be at the top level because, as I said, he did fail. He did fail with um, PSG and Arsenal. So, you know, that's still in his career. But he has got a little bit back by winning the Europa League. No, credit, credit to him. Credit to Villarreal. They played, they played to a game plan. Um, Emery put his tactics out there and they got the result that um, they deserved. And all credit to them and credit to Emery for doing that. Um, yeah, truth. Yeah, go on, isn't it? Is it my turn? Is it my mm. turn? Yeah, Skip says, is it my turn? <laughs> Look, I know... This is, this is, I'm going to tell you a few issues that I have. Okay, I'm playing, I'm playing devil's advocate today. And I like playing devil's advocate, especially with Ole. This issue that I have, a lot of United fans who are Ole out, even before the ball was kicked, that negative energy was there, hoping that he would fail. And you know what I'm talking about, TJ. Mm -hmm. There was a sense of, if he fails, I cannot wait to, to crush it in. But, Unfortunately, you guys, you, the Ole out, out fans, unfortunately, you have to, the reality is he is going to be given a new contract. Yep. He is going to be given the funds, hopefully, to secure new players. You said three or four players, if he gets the backing for that. So the point of the fact is that, yes, it was a failure that they didn't win the Europa League, but the season as a whole, for me, it was an improvement. He has been improving every year. <clears throat> Next year, the pressure's on him. Um, this year, for me, in this climate, it was a free hit. So next year, the pressure's on. And this year, I feel you just got to take it on the chin and be like, we lost the final. Are you seeing in any other way? Uh, well, well. First things first, Archie, before we before I get into it, people, there will be an end of season show coming up where yeah. I am going to completely obliterate Oli. But this won't be focused just on the final or I'll be yeah. talking until the till the till, till the sun rises. But <laughs> um listen, this is how I see it. Yeah. Yes, I 100% agree with you. I know he's getting a new deal. I yeah. know that any um, money that the Glazers give to him, he's going to be spending in a transfer window. Anyone that believes that they're going to get rid of Ole after that final is deluded. Mm. Unfortunately, mm. it's just the way that it is. Mm. Um, my issue is, is that, again, you failed. Again, um, you got to a final. Mm-hmm. Cool but you didn't win it. 
we've gotten to how many semi? How many times did we say semi? Five, I think. Semi, semi, four or five. Four or five semi finals, mm. and you've gone out, bruv. All, we always say it's semi, no hard on, bruv. That's what Ole is, bruv. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's always just semi, it's always just flopping. Like, it's not getting there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. Man said he suffers from erectile dysfunction. <laughs> bruv, Ole, Ole doesn't even suffer from erectile dysfunction. He's a oh, fuck, shit. Bruv. Bro, he's a fucking eunuch, bro. Man, he's he got a finish. Bro, bro, he's a he's a eunuch. He's a fucking unsullied, bro. Oh bro, he ain't shit! Got no balls, fam. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, it's it's a failure. Look, two and a half years he's been in the club, right? Yeah. Managers have been sat doing more, mm-hmm. right? So this final in particular was very important because I think I said it in January. I was like, Ole doesn't win a trophy this season. Yeah. He has to go. Unfortunately, I know he's not, but he has to. Yeah. When you look at Van Gaal, Van Gaal, I think he had three seasons with us. Is it two or three? Two. I think it's th- was it two? Yeah, I thought two. Had three. Yeah, two seasons. First then, one, he the, won the FA Cup. No, no first second, one, he got first one, he got top, top Second four. one, he got the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah, he got the FA Cup, finished fifth, got sacked. Yeah. Maureen, when he came in, first season, two trophies, Europa, League Cup. Um, got us in the Champions League football. Um, mm. Second season, second finished three. second, 81 points, more than what Oli does. And I will be destroying Oli in that end of season about them points tally before people keep trying to say it's an improvement. Mm. Right? So it was detrimental to lose this final. Mm. Right? Because it's like you've been here for two and a half years and you still have nothing to show for it. Right? Yeah. Oli likes to flip flop where he's like, oh, first he's like, I'm here to be successful. Your yeah. success is demon on trophies. <laughs> then I think uh, uh, two months ago, he said something about, oh, trophies don't, is it, isn't the be all and an end all mm. of, um, of, of your managerial tenure and you can have success in other ways. And then yeah. after the Europa League final loss, he's like, it is a failure because we didn't win a trophy. So this is, just tells me everything I need to know about this guy. He's there to try and please the people. But in terms mm. of losing this final, it's a disgrace, right? You've had time. Everyone just keeps trying to refer to Klopp. It took Klopp five years to mm. um, get Liverpool to where they were and blah, 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 blah. But you could see where it was going. You could see the direction that they were going in. You could see the buys yeah. that he was making. You could see the football that we're trying to play. Yeah. Or now you can't tell me what kind of system or what style Oli has. So it's individuals FC, but unfortunately in this final, the individuals didn't turn up for him. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, go on. Don't you think though, based on your logic alone, Mm -hmm. is that if he had won the Europa League, would it not have just papered over the cracks and next year there wouldn't be that pressure on him because fans would be like, oh, look, he's got us a trophy. But now he has it, at least going into next year, the fans are gonna be like, we want. There's no ex- there, you want. You need a trophy. There's no excuse, um, and there's no getting away from it. Even the Ole In fans will say, "What excuse do you have now?" You know, this year, um, pandemic, whatever. First season back in the Champions League. Um, first full season. Yeah, first full season in it. No, second. No, season. second, second, second. Yeah, second, season. second season. This is third season now, and for me. It's going to next year. He has to win something, and there's no way out. It's just you get sacked. But if he won this trophy, that would have given him life to flop next season and probably still get away. Uh, I understand what you're saying, and you have a point. You 100% have a point. Would it paper paper over the cracks? 100%. 100%. Um, any anyone can see that uh, finishing second was false. It was just based on a pandemic year. Um, winning that trophy, yes, would have papered over the cracks. And yes, it would have bought him time. It would have bought him a lot more time than what he's going to be on next season. Mm. But for himself, he needed it. Um, For me, the only reason why I wanted to win it is because I know, I knew, even if we lost, he's still going to be there. Okay. So for me, I was just like, do you know what? He's going to be here regardless, so we might as well win it. We might as well take the trophy and we'll do what, deal with whatever happens next season. Mm. It's as simple as that. And it's a trophy that we should be winning. Even though it's something that we should have never been in, it's a trophy that we should be winning. 
But um, yeah, it would have bought him time. But at the same time, it's just like, well, he's not going anywhere anyway, so he might as well win it. Um, let's, let's get into it now. Um, mm-hmm. As much as I'm playing devil's advocate, look, even I, with all my research, with all my papers, I find it hard as a coach myself to back this man <laughs> on the pitch. I find it hard. When I'm back in Ole, it's off the pitch and, you know, the outside stuff that you can't quantify. On the pitch, I personally cannot get behind this guy. Um, for me, I didn't have a personal investment in the final. Mm, of course um, Because just looking at it just made me annoyed what could have been in terms of us. Mm. Uh, I felt kind of bad because either way, it was a clown winning the title. <laughs> I felt bad either way it was one cloud winning the title so I was like ah but the match itself it was all, and then you just think about the way Ole has managed the build up to the final very poorly the form was poor, poor. The, form, the form was poor mm-hmm. you know building up to the final the game itself oh my gosh we talked about it it was shocking Awful. I need you, and this is where you get your chance now to break down and tell people again his errors in that final because I, you know it's clear for me to see. But I want you to just break it down as a United fan, you watching what you felt. One of the most important things that you brought up in there is the form before the final. Um, the Wolves game before we played the kids, so the first team didn't play. Obviously, we lost to we drew. Then we the, when the first team did play, we drew against Fulham, mm. lost to Liverpool, mm. um, lost to Leicester, and then what was the game before? I think the game before that is did we win? I think no. I think we. I, I don't think we won the game before that either. So the form going into the game was poor, right? Yeah. And you can't switch form on. Yeah, it doesn't definitely. work that way. Yes, definitely. we had was it four games in four days or whatever. But yeah. you just can't you can't switch it on and off. Mm-hmm. In terms of the final, from the beginning, you could see that this wasn't going to end well. Uh. 90 minutes of pure garbage. Pure garbage. Don't get me wrong. Villarreal, credit to them. They stuck to their game plan. They defended deep, put the low block. Emre did his research because he knew, right, that the one thing that United struggle to do is break down teams. Yeah. Right? And then it either takes a penalty or a flute goal for, for us to get into it. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, I think, bruv, just looking at them, I, I'm, we're not big statisticians here. Yeah, we use stats to help. But in mm-hmm. this case, look at the stats of the game. Uh, Villarreal, one shot on target, which is, was their goal. Manchester United, two. <laughs> two, shots of, two shots on target in 100 and, was it 120 minutes? 120 yeah, minutes. 120 minutes. Yeah. 120 minutes, two shots on target. Mm. Right, United, um, 61% possession, nothing to show for it. Mm. Um, playing Paul Pogba in a double pivot when he's been doing all bits um, on the left-hand side for the past two months, right? It was, yeah. It, 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 stupid decision. Um, the way that we just went into the game was just so negative. And when I've said it many times, when you play Rashford, when you play Cavani, when you play Gunwood, when you play Bruno, those are four men that all want to shoot. Four men that all want to shoot. So who's providing the service? Especially when you're playing against um, two banks of four in the low block. There's no one to provide the service. So you're basically saying, all right, cool. You lot as the individuals, go and do something. That's literally like, it. Go, go, that's literally it because there's mm. nothing else. There was no right? plan. There was no, there was no go down the byline, nope. whip crosses in. Like, no, you've done it so sporadically. I remember Greenwood one time got in. But then yeah. that was it. You're thinking, go and do it again. Go and do yeah. it again. Because he beat his man. man. He yeah. beat his man, but... It was a thing where the only person putting crosses in was the worst crosser of football in Wan Bissaka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was the only one putting crosses exactly. in. And then, <laughs> look, look. In the first half, what I will say is that Pogba was decent purely because he was getting on the ball and switching the play, mm. right? And then after that, he went completely missing. 
But mm. on a whole, as a team in 90 minutes, pathetic against a team in seventh, mm. right? Mm. Pathetic. And then you go into extra time and Villarreal looked like the better side. And why did they look like the better side? Because Emre decided, you know what? My players are tired. I need to freshen things up. Right? What the Ross did Oli do, bro? Man waited 100 Ross Clark minutes before he made his first fucking substitution. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, to be honest. Um, I remember seeing Ole not get up from his seat for a good 50-odd minutes. I don't know if there was some extra special of Carnation Street or or <laughs> or certain on, but he didn't get up for a long time. Um, he was watching the omnibus, bro. That's what he was doing. <laughs> he was watching the omnibus, bro. I, I'm like, when is some changes going to come? Your players, first of all, they haven't been playing. Um, it's not like they've been playing properly for a few games. They've been on mm-hmm. and off. You've been resting mm-hmm. them on and off. Mm-hmm. So, and they haven't been playing in that intensity either because the league was done. Apart from the first leg against Roma, which was, what, three, four weeks ago, they mm-hmm. haven't played with no intensity since then. Mm-hmm. So to ask them to come play that intensity and then not make any subs, and it was it was strange. It was strange. You know, Van der Beek there sitting on the bench, not getting any run out. Um, Free Donny. Free yeah, Donny, bro. It's a joke. It's a joke, to be honest. Look, look, look. Imagine, yeah? You're playing against a low block, mm. right? Everybody knows Bruno's not press resistant. Everybody knows Bruno can't dribble. Everybody knows Bruno can't... T- bro, he can't even turn, bro. He can't even turn. So you got man like that, yeah, playing as your number 10. It's ridiculous, mm. right? And you got Donny van der Beek and one matter. Two guys that are technically gifted. Two guys that like playing in between the lines, yeah? Mm. And that would have come on and changed that game. Look how many times Donny did it for Ajax, bruv. He thrives in playing in between the lines, as does one matter. <coughs> and Donny didn't get on the pitch, and one matter came on in the 119th minute because you wanted him to take a penalty, right? When you made your, first, your, only, substi- your only substitution to affect the game, it was Fred. For Gunwood, Gunwood, who was the only... Him and McManus were the only two decent players, mm. right? On the pitch, right? And you take Gunwood off and bring on Fred to do what? I love Fred, but he's not needed in that situation. When mm-hmm. you got Donny, right? When you got one matter, when you got Ahmad, Donny and Ahmad are your two signings and you didn't trust to use them. Mm-hmm. Tell us, tell us going to come on. Cavani was begging for service. Oh, Cavani only had six touches in the opposition box in 120 <sighs> minutes, bruv. And br- put crosses in the box. Bring on Teles for that. Right? He's your signing. And it's named three players that are your signings. And you couldn't say to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to bring them on and see how can I, I, can, I can affect the game. No, because you're a bottle job, bruv. You're a fucking coward. <laughs> right, absolute coward, bro. Man's just sitting there, and then he wants to get, and then he wants to make easy, easy decisions. Taking off Gunwood, saying, "You know what? You're a nice lad. You're 19 years old. Don't worry." Listen, <laughs> you see this? You, you see this? You yeah. Listen, look, I respect yeah. what you've done for the kids in it. Do not get it twisted. But you see, fucking Trashford, bro. He listen when I tell you, you see Bottlegate, you see Bottlegate, you're bringing him to the Euros. Are you mad, bro? When I tell you, I could have kicked this. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I've been cussing him for time, and I keep yeah. saying to people, this guy is the most brain dead footballer I've ever seen on a fucking football pitch, bro. He's so bad, and you're injured, so, bro. Everyone plays injured. La Bum's playing injured in the playoffs right now, right? <laughs> but he's still put performances in. But this guy's so, bro, he's crap, bro. He is trash. That's why they call him Trashford. And I don't care no more because that performance that he put in in the Europa League final, yeah, mm. he should be in jail for that criminal activity that he calls playing fucking football, bro. And Ole had the audacity 
to keep her on the pitch for 120 minutes and to justify it said that you save him for penalties, but yet still you take a poor fucking Pogba. Am I um, a dickhead fan? <laughs> like, Ole is literally taking the piss out of Man United fans. Literally. It's a joke. And uh, I'm not going to lie, look. Like, my, my thing is split because for me, as an Arsenal fan, I need Ole in there. <laughs> I need, bruh, I bruh, need bruh. Ole in there. Even, even Tufus, a Newcastle fan, wants him to stay, bro. <laughs> well, oh, we need... hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm with you on this, TJ, bro. This Norwegian <laughs> cunt pisses me off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tufus, Tufus, he pisses me off, too. He yeah. too, but we need him in there, fam, because bruh, you know, know what? <laughs> Listen, man, I'd rather... Bro, let's get Ryan Giggs the job, bro. Fuck oh these my days, bro. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, dude, hey, you're listen, already man. representing R. Kelly. Now you're trying to jump to... <laughs> <laughs> Come hey, on, bro. Me, man. Listen, listen we, we, this has gotten so bad, bro. It's got, it's got TJ out there. You know you know his background right, right now says Oli out, bro. His next one's gonna be free gigs, bro. Like, trust me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, bro, man. Listen, oh. hey, hey, CJ, bro. I don't know if you were listening to the commentary. Who was it? Right? What was his name, bro? Robbie Savage, bro. Yeah. Oh my day. Like, he was Savage. bringing up United, bro. I swear, if you were listening to this shit on radio, you would have thought United were winning like six one. <laughs> Savage was. Uh, he was his name. I don't know what I don't know what match he was watching, and and at the end, it's like he forgot he was supposed to be an unbiased commentator. Matt was saying, "Come on, United." Matt was yeah, saying, yeah. Was saying McCockerlin went up." He was saying, "Yes, this is the one he's gonna say." And then <laughs> yeah, McCockerlin yeah, yeah, and then Matt, Matt was him. like, "Matt, wait, you see when you see, you see when Sonic the Hedgehog walked up for his penalty, bro? Oh, he was like, like come, come on, Wales." I was like, oh, "Hold on, the Euros ain't for another couple of weeks. Like, how do we get here, bro?" <laughs> Oh yes, man, man. <laughs> savage! You know, hey, guy just made himself famous. Oh so, man, but for let's... real though, Ollie, yeah, oh, bruv, he's just so annoying, bruv. Everything about him just is just like it's simp, bruv. Do you know what I mean? Everything about him, from the way he manages his players to the yes. way he does his interviews to the way his fucking wife looks, like everything, <laughs> bruv. <laughs> hey, look. I, I, I can't disagree, but as I said, for me, United are a sleeping giant, man, because they've got the players, they've got the structure, they've got the turnover. Um, yeah, of course. They get they get the right they get the right um organization in there in terms of man- coaching and management setup. Then they're back up there. And I don't want that until we get back up there. So I need Oli. I need Ole in. No, no. Ole, I'll, I'll hunk up him to Old Trafford, fam. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Ole needs to go, but and people don't get it, get me wrong. The players have to be accountable. I'm not solely blaming Ole, even though I hate him. But the players no, no, have to I, be accountable. I can't, I can't blame the players. It's normally, look, like, normally I blame the players, but in I, this case, like, do you know? You do, need do you know plan. why? Do you know why I blame the players? Because this isn't the Champions League final. This isn't the FA Cup final. You're not playing Man City. You're not playing Bayern Munich. You're not playing Real Madrid. You're playing Villarreal. They finished seventh in La Liga, but, bruv. But but what do you want them to do? Like, with, like the, the, play, the players themselves could, could have taken responsibility. I under, listen. I'm not listen. At no point am I defending Oli or whatever he does. What I'm saying is well, is that I'm holding the players accountable as well because you lot are you lot are good enough to go out there and beat a team like this with the with the talent that we have. You can't tell not, me no. have it. You but you can't tell me you have Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandez, Edison Cavani, Mason Greenwood, right? All on the pitch and you're telling me that you can't score more than one goal? No, but as a team, it. as a team they've never done it. They have as to a team do they it never have, before. but I'm saying that they ca- they can. If they <clears throat> listen, what oh, what team was it, bro? Bro, prime example Look at when um, Avram Grant was in charge of Chelsea, bruv. He wasn't running that team. John Terry and Didier Drogba and Frank Lampard were running that team. But they done it before. They, they, they did course, it oh, before. Oh, but hold on. Hold, we've got players that have won the Europa League before. In not that as team. a team. Not as a team. Like, for me, like, the, 
normally, like normally, I blame the players. Normally, I do blame the players. Now I say the players have to step up. Oh, I'm not saying it's. A, I'm not in, saying it's all the players' fault. I'm saying, but they are responsible. Like, I know. Like, I'm, 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 I'm taking yeah. it fully away from the players this time because Ooh. only in this situation because Villarreal had a setup where it was to stifle. Um, I'll mm. tell you a little story about um, um, taking a little thing from speak for yourself. A little story. I played when I was in sixth form. We played the teachers in a game. Um, and the teachers, what, 40 years old, 50 years old, even mm. 60 year old, six year old. First half, we were smoking them. You know, we, we were up 3 1. I think I scored the third goal as well. We were all confident. Second half, we realized we got shattered because mm. we were chasing the ball all mm. the game without realizing it. And then, no matter how hard we tried to run, we lost the game 4 3 because we couldn't do anything in the second half. Because mm. the lack of experience and, the, and we had no one managing us telling us what to do, where to go. Mm. In this situation, it's the same thing. No matter how much you guys put the effort in, the players put the effort in, high energy, running everywhere, fight, it's not going to change anything because there's no structure, no plan. Mm. Everything 100%. is sporadic. And 100%. That's why I'm taking the blame away this time from the players because they don't know what to do. <laughs> but the, 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 all of the United players played shit, bro. They all play shit. Bro, oh, as, shit. I, as I said, McManus was our best player. That's what I'm saying. That just that tells you how bad the performance was. Yeah. That tells you how bad. And what, what I'm saying is, is that, and I hear you, and I 100% I get it, but what mm. I'm saying is, is that none of the players played. None of yeah. them to a, to a standard. And that's where I hold them accountable. Because I'm like, none of you elevated your game to, to the point where it's like, you know what? If they would have all played a six or seven out of 10, and they still couldn't do it, creating chances and chances, and they couldn't break them down, then I'd be like, you know what? Ole not making the changes, did it? But you didn't even get out of first gear. And that's well, who why... Could, I, where I, huh? Who could? Who could actually have, like, done something to create a chance? Remember, Pogba oh, was bruv. playing deep. Yeah, Bruno... Pogba was playing deep, but, br- bruv, listen... You're playing up against a 37 year old centre back in Raul Albio, bro. I know. Cavani yeah. could have done. I was going to say, bro. Listen, their best players are all rejects from big teams, bro. Coquelin, yeah. Albio, and Baka. <laughs> I don't know no one else from that team. Even Moreno was at. Where was Moreno before? Was he at Valencia before as well? Yeah, I think I know so. Pare- like Pare- Moreno, Pare- bro. Pare- 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 as well. Even Pare- 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 Alberto well. Moreno, Pare- bro. Even Alberto Moreno, bro. Alberto yeah. Moreno, Albio, Baca, and Coquelin are all rejects from other <laughs> Exactly. And this is this is my point. What I'm saying to you is, had the players played 6 seven, and they just couldn't break them down, you know we've seen the United games where they just can't break anyone down. Then I'll be yeah. like, it's solely with Ole, bro, because you've got to find ways to change it. But these guys just didn't do anything. Nothing whatsoever. And that's why I say they have to take some form of responsibility. But the buck stops with that Norwegian Schmeagol, bruv. That's where it stops, because my whole thing is, is that do something different. So, bruv, this guy is always about United DNA, Sir Alex Ferguson. Fergie would have made changes, yeah. right, in 90 minutes. Fergie mm-hmm. would have taken off, probably would have taken off one Bissaka and put Dan James on that right back and said, you know what, let's get another attacker in there. Or yeah. he would have put taken off, um, um, because Bailly did get tired. Taking yeah. off by you and putting a man and man and match so you could play out from the back. Or mm. Fergie would have been like, you know what? All right, cool. Let's transfer to a three at the back, bring Tellers on so he can whip crosses in to Edison Cavani, right? Or he would have brought on Ahmad um, and just said, you know what? Let me take off McMahonese, let me bring on Ahmad, Ahmad and leave Bruno and um Bruno and Pogba as my two midfielders. That's two creators and get an extra attacker on. This guy didn't do none of that. He took off uh, uh, inside forward and Greenwood and brought on a box-to-box midfielder in Fred, bruv. That tells you everything that you need to know about this man. He Mm. is a joke. He's a bottle job, right? He... Oh, God, that's my door. He (laughs) literally, right, literally, right, is the epitome of a pussy old bruv. That is what Ali is, bruv. <laughs> oh, my dude, is what you the heat in that. Bruv, but, that is what Ali is, bruv. My, my, only thing, my only thing about it, and I've asked you, and I've t- asked you this before, mm-hmm. do you, United, right now, <clears throat> when you think about the managers out there, 
do you really need a coach? Can he be successful just managing the players and letting the players go out and <clears throat> win something? The likes of Zidane, the likes of who else? I don't want to say Conte. Conte is quite tactical. Um, I'm, I'm going to say it like, like Zidane, like Alex Ferguson towards the end of his career, who was just managing the players but had top quality players. Can you just manage the players and go and say, go out and win a trophy? Is it possible? He got rid of his whole backroom staff and brought in proper coaches. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but it would be better than what we're getting right now. That I will say. Mm -hmm. I think if he did that, would, would we challenge? Yes. Because the one thing I always reiterate and say, the players seem to like him. Mm. Right, so if he was just like doing what Fergie did and just managed the players, giving them hugs, um, fucking high fives and all that jazz, calling them Rashi and 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 Macy and all that and all that fucking vibes FC and all that, and he got <laughs> proper proper coaches that knew yeah. what they were doing, then a hundred percent, I think we could challenge. Would we win anything? I don't know because mm. at the end of the day, he's still. Ole, bruv. He still bruv, doesn't know what he's doing. Do that, though, bruv. Like, huh? I know you're bringing an example. I know Truth is bringing out an example of Zidane, but Zidane's an anomaly, bruv. But look at all the managers that did try, like, all that nepotism shit. Fucking mm. Lampard, Pirlo. Like, the list goes on, bruv. And they all flop. You know? Yeah, bruv. No, but, but, but that's the same. Um, Lamps, yeah, Lamps, exactly. I'm saying Lamps and Pirlo. Like they were kind of like Ole, where they were trying to manage the players, never really had a strategy or style of football, and they were literally saying, go out there and win the game. But I'm, that's why I'm asking, do you think it's possible, given the size of United, could Ole do a Zidane? Is it possible to do a Zidane if he's got the no. right player and you said the right backroom staff in? If he had, if he had, if, if he had the right coaching staff, I think it would be a lot better. Yeah. Uh, whether uh, would he get us over the line? I don't think so. But it'd be a lot better than what we're seeing. At least with that, we'd we'd know that there'll be style and system of play, mm. and then we can uh, and then we can we can move on from that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And see how far because Ollie's reached his seat. Bro, he's, to me, he's at seat, but it's false. It's false because we're not the second best team in the league, right? Mm. But he's reached his ceiling. Yeah. Right, he can't take this team no further. Yes, he's staying. Yes, he's gonna go out and buy more players. Mm. Just because you're buying a bunch of talented individuals doesn't mean you can do it. We saw it with Emery at PSG. Right, just because you have the individuals doesn't mean shit. We're seeing yeah. that at Barcelona right now. Just because you have the individuals doesn't mean anything. If mm. you can't, we're in a we're in a um we're in an era where systems and style of play is what wins now. Yeah. It's no longer about the individual. They've coached the flair out of the individual now. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, if you ain't got style and you ain't got systems, there's nothing here for you. So yeah, if you brought in this different coaches stuff that knew what they were doing and not the incompetent fucks that they got in Carrick and McKenna and fucking feeling picking up his pension, yeah, then mm. 100% I think that it would be a lot better than what it is. But mm. no, I don't think he could lead us to the promised land. I, I don't think so at all. And I think... Um, Rob, that... You'd rather want a manager. You'd rather want a manager that isn't all happy-go-lucky with the players, holding hands, singing kumbaya with the players and winning trophies than having a manager that's trying to be in the WhatsApp group with all the players. <laughs> you know like that. Of course, of course, you know, I like agree. That, bro. Every, everything, everything's all nice, nice, bro. bro like, all right, let me give you an example. Could you imagine, yeah? If Ole had, like, say for example, we get Jaden this summer. Yeah. And you know how Ole, 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 Ole and Rashford are like fucking bum chums, yeah? Could you imagine Ole, the, the board being put up with Jaden's number for Fred? <laughs> and what would happen? <laughs> bruv, Sancho would have poked him up there and then, bruv. <laughs> he would have poked him up there and then. But that's the thing. Ole likes to make these nice substitutions because he don't want to upset nobody. You have to upset people. Fergie done it all the time. Bro, do you know how much this guy quotes Fergie and he doesn't do anything that the man does? 
It's mad, isn't it? He doesn't do anything that Fergie does, but yet still it's like, oh, yeah, Fergie gave a team talk. He was on a team bus. Um, Fergie was there, blah, 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 blah. Fergie gave me everything, taught me everything I know. I was sitting on the bench, let, bro, he doesn't do a thing that Fergie does, bro. And this is, this, listen, this is what these dumb United fans wanted, isn't it? So they now have to reap, you reap what you sow. And one final thing before we wrap up, Truth, before you ask yeah. me my final question. Yeah. David De Gea is not getting off the hook. He's not getting off the hook. Uh, no, that's right. literally what was going to be my final, oh, final oh, okay. thing. I wanted to talk go about on. the penalty. Go on. I want to talk, go on. So, obviously, the penalty shootout, <laughs> I have to I have to say about because I played in goal myself. You know, I'm a five percent, I'm a five percent goalkeeper. Mm. And and I'm looking at that penalty shootout. And this guy made the other keeper, what's it really, or whatever his name is, really? Your son, yeah. He made him he made him be the hero. Without <laughs> because he couldn't save a shot. We're not some of the penalties were good. Some of the penalties were good. Oh mate, the one, some man, of them. There was there was two in particular. Yeah, there, there was, was two, a, I said uh, Cockerland one was top bins, no saving that it oh was still rising. Day. Bruv, a lot of them were top bins, but I was like, bruv, it's like Villarreal, yeah. At the start of the season, um Emre just circled Europa League final and said, take penalties, literally, bruv. Literally, but some of them. Some of them, you're looking at the game and thinking, you're a good shot stopper. I can see why you're a good shot stopper. But then you were diving so early. But why? What ha- Can you tell me what has happened between Henderson? Why did Henderson get dropped? Is it because of that one mistake that he made? It's called the, um, Liverpool the Liverpool game. The Liverpool game. game. The Liverpool game is the reason why he's been dropped. I am surprised because... <sighs> even, okay, so, even, even going into it, even before the penalty shot. Wouldn't you just want to switch your goalkeeper knowing the stat that De Gea hasn't saved the penalty in six years? Fam, <coughs> do you lot know who took the team talk for the penalties? <laughs> Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that thinking, what I don't see Pogba. Bro, Pogba took the team talk for the penalties. So why do you think, yeah, that Ole would be smart enough to make substitution and put Dean Henderson in goal. Bro, this guy hasn't saved a penalty since Leighton Baines for Everton in 2016. Bro, he doesn't save penalties and he proved it in the penalty shooter. How do you go through a game and you don't make a save? And you had one shot on target in the game, but you had 11 penalties against you and you didn't save one. Even, even, I know it's critical, I know it's critical, but even the goal that Villarreal scored, I'm yeah. just thinking, De Gea, yes, I know you got deceived because you make a stutter step because you think the person might go across you. But it was, I didn't see that dive where you're just going to try to it away. He just kind of like that fell down. down. Bro, it's I'm like he like, was in cement, bro. Yeah. It's like he was in cement and his legs wouldn't move. So he just stuck a hand out and thought, do you know what? If I, as long as I stick a hand out, it will be okay. No, we saw it, bro. You didn't move your feet. At one I point, did. I did think he could come and punch as well, but... Yeah, uh, but uh, 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 it was a good cross. It was a good, it, 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 it was a good ball in and they worked it well. Yeah. I have to give them credit for it. But yeah, now, nah, bruv, bruv, this is Ole that made a substitution in 100 minutes. Why do you think that he's going to sub the hair out? No, like, we all knew. We all knew, because I said it. I was like, bring on Dean Henderson, because the hair hasn't saved a penalty in ages. Everybody knew, apart from Ole, bruv, <laughs> because he didn't want to um, make that change. But who did that? I think it was um Van I think Howell. it was that Van Hal in the in the um World Cup when Tim, when he Tim, Tim took Krul off thingy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Tim, Tim Krul. Krul, yeah, that's the yeah, exactly. Louis Van Hal, by the way, who got such to sacked after winning the FA Cup in two <laughs> years, but he won a trophy as well. It's but, smart, it's just general and but he but the mistake was made when he dropped Henderson. If you back Henderson to be a number one goalkeeper. You cannot drop him off. Well, he one didn't mistake. back him. Basically, yeah. Obviously, De Gea was away with his family. So he said, yeah. let me give Dean Henderson a chance. And then he couldn't take him out. The problem came because apparently when De Gea came out, he threw his toys out the pram, innit? Really? I was like, why have you dropped me? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So Ole was just waiting for Dean Henderson to flop so he could throw De Gea back in. And that's what he did. I said, and don't get me wrong, I'm not convinced by Dean Henderson. I'm still saying in this summer, do the swap deal with De Gea and Oblak and make Oblak our number one. But I'm not convinced by Dean Henderson. 
But I'm, I'm that, not either, but but in that final, you make that substitution. You make that it's, it's just another failure that Ole's made. Because you make that substitution. You got a goalkeeping tr- coach, yeah, that's looking like an o- obese Phil Mitchell, bruv. <laughs> but and he's there trying to go like he's he's got the fucking notes and he's going through it. Surely someone would have written down in a piece of paper that he hasn't saved a penalty since 2016. Apparently the guy ignored the ignored the paper. He said, "No, I'm gonna rely on my own skills." <laughs> what skills, blood? Blood, you can't, bro. He doesn't. Penalties can't be saved with your feet in it, so you're useless. <laughs> you're useless, bro. Oh, and shit. ultimately, he cost us the game. Yeah, he cost us the game. In in the end, the game was cost because of Ole, right? But in the end, he cost us the game because man, imagine having eleven penalties. That's right, mad. and don't get me wrong, a lot of them were fucking weldies, bro. Ridiculous, yeah. right? But there was two in particular. There was one that you know, there's one that he died for early. There was one that went, I think, over just over his fingertips. Yeah. And there's another one that he should have saved where he dived and he just didn't get a strong enough hand. And don't yeah. get me wrong, Mooley had a couple. Luke no, was he, one he definitely should have saved. Really, really, he's such a crap. Guy. And this is why you, this is why I thought you guys should be more disappointed. Um, this is why I was. A, that goalkeeper is so bad. Like, Bruv, he he's, is rubbish. he's rubbish. He's so rubbish. But packed. this is what happens when you don't create anything. Because you've got your best player too deep, right? You've got your number 10 doing up second striker. So he's not getting involved in the play, not dropping into the pocket. And then you've got two guys that love dropping in the pockets on your bench. Bruv, listen. <laughs> it is what it is. Um Ole is Ole. We like United fans are just gonna have to put up with it. I'm not putting up with it. I'm not interested no more. Until he goes, I'm not interested. And it's gonna be another one of them where he's gonna get a new deal. Bearing in mind, yeah. Conte's there, Zidane's there, and it looks like Poch is available. I guarantee you, if United picked up the phone and said to Pochettino right now, we'll give you the job, he'd take it over Tottenham. Ooh, he'd take that's it over Tottenham. Pure that's interesting. I'm, I'm surprised, you know. Um, purely because of where 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 Poch, purely because of where Tottenham are, should yeah. Kane's not happy, yeah. right? And if Poch came over to United, United would stand a bigger chance of getting Sugar Kane over the line. Do, do you think though, after his disaster at PSG, would he really step into another high profile? Of course he would. Of course he would. I mean, there's there's talks of him actually doing a U turn and taking what Conte wanted in um in Real Madrid. There's talks of him doing that. I, I, I don't see what he did at um, PSG as a failure, purely because I give him, like, don't get me wrong, it's the French League, we know it's Farmers League, like, they should win it and whatnot. But considering where they were uh, when he took over, it's the same thing with Tuchel. Like, I, yeah. I, give, him, I give him till next season to, to build. I'm not going to do it based on this season, even though it is Fair an enough. easier league. Uh, but yeah. I, he'll be an idiot to go to Tottenham. The only way you leave that PSG... Is that even if even if United came calling, it'll be a bit silly. But yeah. you, you you don't leave PSG to go to Tottenham. You leave PSG no. to go to Real Madrid. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 it's as simple as that. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. That is that the Yeah, man. Yeah. A, yeah, yeah. And a good one about Ali. <laughs> listen, people, don't worry, bruv. Listen, the end of season show is coming up. It's going to be coming up over like after the bank holiday weekend after the Champions League final, where I'll be literally going ham on Ole and bringing in all the other statistics that I have on him. But we need to move on because we need to preview the Champions League final.